I still remember the day, like yesterday. Don't know whether it's just in my head or not, but I knew something was wrong. It didn't make sense. There was some connection there that I've never felt before. And that's when I um, started to panic. I noticed Dad's boots were at the back door and he never goes anywhere without his boots. I looked up out the kitchen window and I could see my father on the ground and he had just committed suicide. Uh, g'day, my name's Billy Browning from Narromine. I'm a young farmer and this is my story. Narromine's a uh, great little populated place in regional New South Wales. Uh, we've got a population of 3,500 people. Year in, year out, we farm 3,400 hectares. We've always got someone looking over the fence at what you're doing. That's just part of a small community. My beautiful mum and dad met in Narromine. They both grew up in Narromine. We've got one brother and two sisters, all younger. It's a typical, I guess, country family growing up. Like we're always out on the farm working every day. Sometimes we look at it and we look back and it was almost child labour, I reckon, with some of the hours we did. 2012 was the toughest year I've ever experienced. My family just went on a two week holiday to Bali. So yeah, everything was going great. We got back from the holiday and it was only three days later that I found my dad committed suicide that morning. The background to the story, I guess, to be honest, is we had no idea that dad was suffering from depression at the time. We were financially stable, beaten the drought. They just bought a new farm no record of depression. I ran straight over, of course, but it was already too late. The next thing was probably the worst. I had to call my mum to tell her about dad. I couldn't wish that upon anyone. That image of seeing my dad there is something that I will never lose. The part that sucks the most is he was such a proud father. You ask anyone, and everywhere he went, the first thing he talked about was us kids. He just absolutely loved us, like could not yeah, ask for a better dad. We spent so many times looking back on it and you know, was there signs of this and of the depression? And we, we don't think there is. If we knew about the depression and, and it was planned, he wouldn't have done it there, not while we were home. Like that's not dad. Part of me is angry and you get frustrated and you have your days where you just, you want to go up there and you want to, you know, to be honest, probably put one on his chin because you're just so frustrated. I definitely miss my dad. I miss him a lot. Since dad, we've run uh, mental health clinics in the town. The Narrowman Rugby Club has got really around it and we run a memorial game every year. We've raised close to $40,000 and that's all gone back into the Narrowman community for mental health and we're, we're tackling this issue head on because we're proud of dad, but we want to change other people's lives. We, we don't want to see people suffer or go through what we've had to go through. Since dad's suicide, as a family, we haven't sat back. Looking at it from a broader perspective, that's what I really encourage everyone to do. You've got to be that friend that you want to be. And if you're sitting there at the bus stop and you're waiting for the bus or you're at the airport and that plane's delayed, I can't stress enough, go through that phone list on your phone and call that friend that you haven't spoken to in a couple of weeks. And you might be sitting there and you think it's awkward to call, but you imagine what that guy or that girl, what they're going through, and the fact that they look at their phone and someone's calling them, that can just spark a conversation I know it's cliche, but that can change their life. So many different organisations are now addressing mental health and we've got to use every avenue we can to beat this disease. And that's, that's the end goal, is to eradicate mental health as a, as a major health issue.